Okay. Lisa, so, yeah. you want to introduce yourself? I will. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I saw some new names. Um, wait, let me just get some in here. My name is Lisa Arnold, and I have been teaching at the center for many years. I also, um, besides the art history lectures, um, um, I teach watercolor and colored pencil and stuff like that. I exhibit, but um, I love these art history lectures. I think they're fascinating and I think people can learn so much. So that's me on this hot and steamy day. Ah. Okay. I am showing you this as a beginning. Um, it's not the uh, thing that he is known for, which is obviously American Gothic, but I just wanted you to take a look at this woman from the Midwest. I'll explain more about her later. Just don't forget how sharply defined she is, how unhappy she looks, I think. She's got her chick and her purple egg, and um, it's that Grant Wood expression. So you'll, you'll see more what I'm talking about when I go on. So why don't we continue with the next um, slide, please? Okay, we all know this, right? He was an American painter, born in 1891. He died in 1942. So he, he was a pretty young man. He is the American painter who um, just, embodies rural Midwest compositions. And again, I mean, we all know this one. It's become an icon at this point. Painted in oil, um, there's a story behind it, but you know, it's, I, why do I have you on uh, her? But anyway, okay, it's, um, it's oil. Um, again, talk about misery. Um, the Carp Carpenter Gothic House. Um, we know it's like in our blood, this painting. I don't know if anybody wants to comment on it or not. I mean, it's so part of our life. Do you know what I mean? I've always hated it. But anyway, <laughs> let's move on, okay, to the next one, please. Jason J. Okay, as I said, it's an icon, and there hasn't been an untouched joke about that painting. I'm showing you the Sesame Street characters. I'm showing you Miss Piggy and um, Kermit. But I'm telling you, if you are in the mood to Google and see all of the, you know, crazy representations of this paint, people just love it and they have a good time with it. And um, there they are. So I just wanted to show you one of the many because these are found absolutely everywhere. Notice her pin, her cameo pin. It's of a pig in profile. So I thought that was pretty good. Okay. If we move on to the next one. Okay, this is what fascinates me. This is the sketch of the famous house done before before he started painting, like his painting, like in 1929, the year before. And let me just talk a little bit um, about this house and about the people. Um, Grant Wood saw a very unusual looking house in Iowa. And it has um, an upper window that looks almost church-like, right? I like this more than the final piece. Um, he was inspired to paint this canvas. He only worked in oil except for his other craft work, which I'll get into. And he wanted to um, picture the people, depict them of the um, people who lived inside there, okay? I just wanna show you something very interesting about his, well, this is a sketch, but he's a very, controlled, was a very controlled and tight painter. But check out this tree here. Do you see that marvelous loose white oil scribbling, so to speak, on top of the tree, which adds movement to it? It's not static. Um, 
very, very different from his style. Now, again, you can see how relaxed he is. He's got, you know, scribble in the foreground for some of his plants and, you know, it's unfinished. But what also intrigues me, check out the barn. Do you see on your, it's your right side, I believe. Can you all see that there? Everybody with me? Okay, anyway, I have never seen, that was not included, I believe, in the final, but it adds a whole other feeling. Anyway, I love this, it looks haunted. This was also a quick oil sketch. And um, let me just tell you a few things. There is so much mystery about the American Gothic. Um, it was at the very beginning of the Great Depression, okay? And again, the Midwest, I mean, everybody got clobbered, but we're talking about the land of the dust bowls, you know, the horror that went on there. And um, it just plunged the uh, rural, American rural world into poverty. And um, mystery really, really surrounds these two figures. So if we can move on to the next one, please. Okay, those are the actual models for American Gothic. Notice you don't see the red barn in the distance. Who are they? Okay, um, the man is dressed, it's very interesting. If you look at his clothing, he's in overalls, but yet like a suit jacket, okay? And the woman is wearing a piece of jewelry, very common, you can see this, you know. I mean, uh, sorry? Nothing, I'm sorry, I, I saw the cameo it looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was a very calm, common way of dressing, but that was considered jewelry and kind of getting dressed, okay? So they made an effort to dress up for the painter or just to celebrate their, um, their lives. Now, let me tell you about these two who also look pretty grim, okay? To create them, he had his dentist, Dr. McKeeby pose, okay? And his sister Nan pose, all right? His sister Nan was in that first introduction of pictures that I started this lecture with. And again, she looks pretty grim. It's that really stoic look that we see in a lot of his paintings, okay? Um, they look, Iowans actually, from the state of Iowa, they were not happy with this. They thought it was like a caricature of rural life. No joy, angry, pinched. Um, but he, Grant Wood, the artist, always defended himself in this painting. He felt like it was a tribute to the American rural Midwest. Now, what is your take on that? Does anybody have any comments? Because it's a hell of a tribute, I think. Anybody have any comments? Well, I mean, how, how does anyone account for that this must be, you know, we all know the most iconic painting. It, yeah. it does resonate with something in, in all of us, I think. Right. I think many people at first, when they're introduced to it, they're kind of amused and who are these people and the guy with the pitchfork and all of that. But I think there's a lot to read into it, which I just mentioned, you know, the Gothic house with the church. With, that doesn't help, you know, with the severity of it. And again, you know, the tough times that these people were facing, and it's very much depicted. So I think, you know, we, this is in our fiber, this, this portrait. It really is. So um, let's move on to the next one. Okay, this is Grant Wood himself. I'm intrigued by this portrait again in oil. What's your take on this everybody before I start to jabber about him? This was done in 1932. I like his haircut. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, he is. Nowadays, if you got rid of those speckled glasses, he looks like the ultimate, to me, college football player. Very preppy. He's very beefy, right? 
you know, he's got a sprinkle of, of um, uh, freckles. He is so all American that it's not funny. But if you hold up your hand, take a look, block out the rest of the portrait and look at his eyes. And again, what do you see? He's looking right at you uh, with uh, defiance almost. This is me. This is something going on, yes. I mean, I find that he looks very suspicious. Again, rather grim. Look at his beloved wheat fields in the background that are painted in very muted tones. So there's a big jump in perspective, you know, from those muted fields, and that's that oil tower or whatever, a windmill or whatever it is, and him, who's very challenging, and he occupies a lot of space, okay? So that's Grant Wood, the painter, a young man in the Midwest. I mean, I'm just curious, as I studied this, maybe it's my problem, but I was, you know, American Midwest artists seem few and far between. I don't know. For me, I maybe I'm wrong. I tend to think of the East Coast. I think of um, Southern painting and I think of the West Coast. I forget about that vast in between. And that's my mistake, okay? So that's what I have to say about that. So at any rate, I just want to tell you a little bit. Um, there was a family dispute about um, the American Gothic painting. If we could go back to just Jason, the original, just for a second. Uh, the other one, <laughs> this one, yeah. People were very, very obsessed who knew her and particularly the family about Nan. She was not made to look pretty and everybody in his family and town were very, very um, upset about this. However, this painting brought him into, he was noticed in the art world. He, it was exhibited at the Art Institute of Chicago and the painting won a bronze medal and he also got $300 as a prize, which is like a lot of money, you know, during the depression for an artist and it was painted. I mean, people loved it though, even though the family was upset. It was printed in um, newspapers, magazines grabbed it and it was circulated widely through the country. So finally in 1935, four, excuse me, Time Magazine stepped to the plate and they made a full color reproduction of this painting in their magazine and hence it was instantly successful. Okay, so again, if we can jump back to jump ahead to the picture of Grant Wood, please. I'm sorry, Jason. Yeah, here we go. I just want to tell you a little bit about his background. He was born in a very small town um, in 1891. His mother did move the family to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, which was more of a city, so to speak, after his father died in 1901. Now, upon moving, Grant began, and we can't forget this grant, like we're on a first name basis. He began as an apprentice in a local metal shop, okay? And he was enrolled in the Handicraft Guild, which was run entirely by women in 1910. And it's now a permanent and prominent artist collective in the city, it still exists. So at any rate, it's said that he went to the guild to paint American Gothic, okay? But at the same time, okay, he was a teacher in a one room rural uh, schoolhouse, okay? And he also enrolled in 1913 in this, the, uh, what is it? As a silversmith at the Art Institute of Chicago, which is a very prestigious place. So, Again, you have to remember, he was very accomplished at other art forms as well. Okay, where he got the encouragement, I'll never know. But somehow he knew to search out. Okay, so if we could go on to the next one, please. Okay, this particular painting, here's my list. Okay, <clears throat> this is called A Large Woman with Plants, okay? Uh, this was painted in um, 1925. What is your take on this picture? 
Anybody? Well, it, it, uh, it's uh, defiant, it's sad. Uh, it's like, here I am and uh, the, the world is not a happy place. No, nobody is having a good time for the most part in a lot of his work. I'm just gonna show you one thing that's very important though. Notice the background. It's sort of coming more into focus, so to speak. And Grant <clears throat> Wood, you'll see as we go along, did many, many, many landscapes. So we, here we have the interest, you know, it's portraiture. And check out that plant. To me, the, I mean, it's not a Midwestern plant, and especially back in 1925. I mean, I'm making these generalizations, but I think she loves the plant. Notice the age in her hands. And to me, she looks very, very resigned. Okay, there we have one of the windmills. Yeah, those are windmills back there, right? And um, this is this woman's life. So why don't we move on to the next one? Here's where he starts going into his rural Americana scenes. Okay, this was painted in um, Stone City, Iowa, 1930. So you see, it's very, very interesting. He has a very different style with his landscapes compared to his portraiture. And you'll see how this goes on um, throughout the lecture. Um, everything is very puffy and soft and almost sensual, don't you find? Why isn't anybody talking to me? <laughs> it's extremely, extremely, his painting is kind of very um, realistic, almost photographic. Yeah. Yeah, and yet I, I feel that, I mean, it's realistic, but when I get to some of his landscapes, they're so cush, I call them Legos on steroids. I mean- That's what they look like. They really do, don't they? And yeah. check out these two trees at the yeah. bottom, the not left, the bottom, yeah, the bottom but like- left. Oh, Yeah, bottom over left. Over here, over here on the left, yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's my right. It, one of them is a polka dot tree. Do you see that yes. next to what are those? They're like decorative ornaments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of an insanity, I feel, about him. I mean, he just popped them in. And I mean, do those exist? I don't know. But again, you're starting also to see some industrialization, so to speak, of a small town. We've got a bridge going on, these large buildings here. We wonder if they're factories. They certainly don't look like homes, okay? You still have the farming element going on. And of course, the untouched vastness of the farms. So- um, The, the whole right? scene is very compressed. It's covering a huge landscape uh, in, in a small space. You've been there? I've, I've been to Iowa, but, but I remember, in my, this is off the subject, but I remember uh, landing uh, from an airline, Ozark Airlines in, in, uh, in Iowa, and I was shocked that the cornfield was right at the edge of the runway. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> if the pilot went off slightly, he'd be hitting corn, uh, corn stalks. I mean, yeah. no, it's interesting. everything was utilized. Yes, it was. And, you know, it's so sad. I was, this is a little aside, but I was reading something somewhere and basically there are only, I mean, there's some, far, you know, obviously some farms left in this country, but three major farms own most of Midwestern land at this point. Only three farms. You're talking about hundreds and thousands of acres. So I think that's a real tragedy. Anyway, moving right along, um, Okay, I think this is a very, very interesting painting. This is called Large Arnold Comes to Age. In 1930, it was painted. Now again, I think Large Aunt Arnold, he looks rather haunted. I wanna show you something though that's, I don't know if anybody's gonna notice, or you tell me, who, what figures do you notice in the background? And what are they do, doing? And we're talking 1930. They're nude. Yeah. And they're guys, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh. 
So hold on to that, okay? Now, large Arnold here, what I do think, the background is so beautiful, that deep, deep sky, and again, his puffy plants and things, but his colors, the oranges, the umbers, you know, the sky and the water almost match each, each other. And this man has very, very broad shoulders, just, just to point that out. Um, again, though, I think he looks very sad. Not as grim and as done in by some of his other posers, you know, figures in his portraits. He's young, um, he's serious, but I don't think he's been done in by life. And it's very interesting, if you notice by his arm, there's a little like dragonfly. Mm. And I could find no information because, I mean, it obviously symbolizes something, I feel. Looks and like I could a moth. Not I'm sorry? Looks like a moth. A moth. Okay, it's going to eat a sweater. I don't know. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's there. So the isn't, moth. Isn't the proportions, isn't there something wrong? He, he looks like his, his chest is too short. Oh, he's <laughs> huge. I mean, look at those shoulders. Now, back in the day, men wore very high pants. They didn't waist, rest on the waist or hip uh, line. Or these days, you know, down below the knees. But um, um, yeah, it was a very traditional, everything was tucked in, pressed. And pants, a lot of pants almost did come to the chest. That's a good point, though. What uh, also seems, I mean, his shoulders, he, they're mm. just humongous. So it's an interesting painting, I feel. I noticed every one you've shown so far virtually has a tree in it, uh, as, if a tr mm -hmm. as, as if this landscape doesn't have trees, but there are trees. And, uh, and he has to show it in every picture so far. Well, he was really, I mean, he loved the Midwest. He was, he was, it was just his essence. So let me just tell you a little bit more about his life before we go on to some other paintings. It's very, very interesting. So I said he was a very accomplished artist, but he was also a great craftsman as well. And I'm gonna show you some of this stuff um, shortly. But in 1922 to 1928, two years before this painting was done, he went to Europe, which I think is also very interesting. He learned about many schools of painting there. And the one that he claimed influenced him the most was the Flemish painter, uh, Jan van Eyck. And I should have put a picture of you, of him in to show the two different paintings. So um, I didn't see much of a similarity at all, but Jan van Eyck, he actually was the originator of oil painting. He invented it, so to speak. And he did detailed panel paintings. And it was very much of the uh, Netherlandish school of art back then. A lot of portrait, um, people, clarity, much clarity, very realistic. We've got that going on here. So you can see um, the influence just of going to Europe, what is, how it's influenced him. Very subtle, but it's there, okay? Now, um, from 1922 to 35, he lived with his mother in a loft in Cedar Rapids, and he turned it into a personal stud, uh, studio. And again, Stone City, he founded the Stone City Art Colony. And um, the studio had no address, but he helped people get through the Great Depression, okay? So if we move on to the next one, let's talk about this one quintessential Grant Wood landscape. Do we like it or are we sort of, it's called Young Corn, painted in 1931. What's our take on this, everybody? Again, it's, it's very compressed. It's a large land, a large field, mm -hmm. all compressed uh, into you know, a, a relatively small space. So, so all, all the shapes are compressed. Mm -hmm. Good point. It's also interesting in a field. Now I know, you know, it doesn't get terribly windy out there, but I mean, I'm making these generalizations, but this is a very, very static painting. Don't think nothing 
no action in the trees or the rippling corn in the background or the seedlings here. Notice there are there is a farmer and two workers there in the lower field, not the well, foreground. To me, it looks almost cartoonish. I think it, it might be stretched on my home screen, but it looks almost cartoonish. Yes, I agree with you. Even the house, look at the farmhouse. It's, it's like a, I think of, of board games. Yeah. Board, I just do. I mean, everything is so circular and packed, as you said, and it's just, it's sort of blown out of proportion, but not. And it's a very, to me, it's a, I have to say, it's a very, very unique style. Okay. I think the, the, the size of the people being so small, even the house small in comparison, he's saying how vast the land is yes. and how little the people are in comparison. There probably yeah. aren't a whole lot, a huge population there. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a very, very good point, Maureen. And um, yeah, they seem vulnerable almost. You know, they have to take care of this vast expanse of land. I'm going to point out one other thing. Look at the shrubs below the trees as we go towards the foreground. They're basically circles. You know, fantasy. Meatballs, that's what they're called. What are they called? Meatballs. Ah, no, tell they're me. Boxwoods. It's boxwood, really, Jason? Well, no. The, they, when you shape your boxwoods, they say the meatball shape. The <laughs> shape. Uh, topiary. Yeah, well, these are meatballs. There you go. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the next one, please. OK, I rather like this one. This one is called the appraisal painted in 1931. I love that hen. I love it. It's extraordinary. Now, obviously there's selling going on. Look at the woman. She looks wealthy. She's got, you know, a fancy coat on. She's got a pin in her hat. She's got a fancy, very detailed purse. This is obviously the young man who's showing it to her. Um, he looks very sweet and hopeful, okay? And there's the poor dumb chicken who's so beautiful, not knowing what's going on. I love this painting. I, I like his portraits. I think they're very, very interesting and they're unique. Look how carved out that woman's profile is and it tumbles into the rounded double chins. Okay, he didn't miss anything. You see the thin painted lips. I mean, she's marvelous. But she, she wasn't grim. Everything you've shown us that were portraiture up to this point had this very grim look. Of, oh yeah. And this is quite, quite different. Well, he's very sweet and kind of vulnerable looking. I think the woman still looks kind of tough, you know? But I, I do love this painting and it's so interesting. In the background, you see it almost looks like a carpet. It's not. It's it's little plantings, okay? But if you just look at them and the symmetry and the size that he used, it's really interesting. And then the starkness of the barn and the house and you know the tilting fence. Okay. Now notice his palette is mostly sepias, bird umbers gold not golds but and yellows which i think except for the red at that, at that time lisa i think there was a great deal of, ma of magazine illustration oh yeah stories and this has that kind of an aspect to it yes though he didn't do magazine work actually but it's that style you're absolutely right and um check out his hands they're marvelous i mean grant wood had a great foundation but again, I find this very static. It's almost like a photo was taken for a second. You know, it's very, very posed. I think it's very interesting. What do you all think? Anybody have any thoughts? I'm amazed at the detail of the chicken. You know, the, yeah. the, the artwork that it took to, to give us that pattern of, of the chicken's feathers. He's very meticulous. You know, even with as rounded as, as Jason calls them, meatball trees, okay? So nonetheless, I just want to tell you a little bit more about him. He had 
less than $100 when he started this colony. And they leased all these artists 10 acres of land on the, it was the Green Estate. And um, many students, like 120, which is very unique during the depression when everybody's scrabbling to survive, um, they lived in, it's very, very interesting. They were housed in ice wagons. So you can see, you know, it was not exactly like the retreats that we know of for artists and writers today. You know, it was a dedicated uh, group, but it became a mecca for artists and art lovers. And the, the colony became a huge success in terms of, you know, word and appreciation, but it never, never um, succeeded financially. Basically, those 120 students were basically allowed to work in basically utopia. You know, there's a harsh thing going on in the United States. So big deal, they lived in ice houses. They painted. Okay, so let's- I like uh, the screen door, Lisa. I'm Is sorry? Can, the screen door to the oh. left where you can see through. I mean, it's transparent, he, he nailed it. Interesting. He did. It, it almost reminds me of an Andrew Wyeth kind of door, <laughs> so to speak. But um, it is beautiful, isn't it? Very beautiful. Good observation. All of you see that? When I first saw this painting, I thought that was a woman holding the hand, not a man. Well, this gets interesting. He is rather effeminate, isn't he? That, well, look at that's the hand. a man? That's not a man. Is it? I don't know. That's a oh, I think it's a, a man. No. Well, it was a woman. That looks like a really? woman. How many people think it's a woman? Yes, woman. woman. Really? Looks yes. like my wife. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. <coughs> Excuse me. That one really got to me. My mistake. I thought it was just a young man. Now you can see the hair coming off her. Uh, she's got longer hair coming out of her. You're right. Uh, You're right. No. The guy. It's a dude. Okay, I mean, he's got some great eyebrows, if that's amazing. Aren't they? Very quizzical. Very, very quizzical. Okay, let's go on to the next one. This one I love. I just think it's hysterical. Okay, this is oh, the revolution. What? Ladies of the DAR, 1932. Ah. Isn't it incredible? <laughs> <laughs> Washington crossing with Delaware. Delaware. Yes, you got that. You got that. Look at them, though. I mean, I can talk about each one of their faces. Notice all of them have very, very thin, rather prissy lips. Okay. They're sort of dressed up compared to some of the other women we saw, except for the one in the appraisal. Does anybody have a favorite of the three? The one oh, holding my. the teacup. The teacup lady? Yeah, her yeah. hand looks like a skeleton. It's a beautiful hand rendering though. I love the one right in front of her with her, her grimace slightly tilted and the little, little eyes. And this one over here, and notice they are dressed up. She's got some lace embroidery with a brooch and you know, they're wear well, this one is wearing earrings and stuff, but. Is the middle one wearing glasses? It looks like. No, those are circles under her eyes, like oh. mine. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, I think it's really humorous. Nobody in any research said that it was done to be humorous, but I think it's hysterical, okay? And let me just tell you something. Um, people were kind of alarmed by this. I mean, they weren't like, oh my God, but there was like a little of what's going on here, but he really depicted them so beautifully, I think. So, any so why is he covering this when most of his stuff is from the Midwest? This seems I'm like, sorry? Um, why is he covering this when this is not a Midwest thing? This is more of a New England, New East. England thing. You know, that's a very good question. Um, we do primarily think of it in New England and the Middle Atlantic states, but surely there must have been a sprinkling of them because he didn't, he never went to, you know, the East Coast. So, good question. Um, look at the pattern on the, the teacup. 
I love them. I just think they're hilarious in a, a good way. Okay, let's move on to the next one. This one kills me also. Again, very stretched out and compressed. This one is called Farmer with the Pig and Corn, 1932. Let me tell you something. Around this time, he got married to his wife and um, they had a miserable, miserable relationship. It only lasted three years. She was seven years older and older than, and she was also born in Iowa. So again, around this time, this was painted and he was courting her. Um, I find this, I don't want to be judgmental. I find this very disturbing. And one of the things that makes it so disturbing is he's standing on that little bit of land with the daisies and the pigs. And then there's that mint green background really gets to me. The pigs are almost like cartoons. If you look at the farmer's face, he's sunburned. He has massive arms and shoulders yet again. Um, what do you think about the expression on his face? Kind of blankish. I think he looks addled from the sun. <laughs> Poor guy. Look at the ears. There's your best cut, Jason, that you like. Yeah, you're um, wearing my same shirt. I've got the same shirt on right now. I just need overalls. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. There is something sticking out of his pocket. If you notice, I'm sure it's a bandana. Um, again, very static, very stretched out, but I find the pigs to be almost cartoon-like. So there's something different going on there. Does anybody have any thoughts about this particular painting? You got I think they all look obese. I'm sorry? <clears throat> I think they all look obese, which is interesting in a time of certainly not of plenty. Even that um, basket that he's carrying has, you know, is loaded with corn. Yeah, and yeah. Very I good point. Think. Yeah, but the, the corn would be for the pigs, probably, possibly. Because they, 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 um, the corn is one of the, one <laughs> of the basic nutrients they would feed the pigs. Or the, or, or the, or the not the kernels so much, but, but the, the basic okay. stock of the, the corn. Well, whatever, they're going to be fed. I find this very interesting. The little depiction of the daisies there. When everything is so severe, even though things are rounded or stretched or whatever, and then he's got a little bit of whimsy with those daisies. What do you think is the purpose? It, it, this, uh, his other paintings have such expansive background. I know. And here is this man standing on this little tiny piece of land that does it. It doesn't almost, it's almost like it's a different artist. I mean, his backgrounds yes, usually and, are just wonderful. Yes and no. I mean, artists have a right to experiment, I guess, but it is an odd painting. You're right. It's very, very different than anything else he did. All the guys that he paints have giant ears. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. So let's move on to the next one. And I want to talk to you about regionalism. Okay. Here we are. I'll just give you the name of this one. This is called Boy Milking Cow in 1932. It's like in the previous painting, this could be his son. You know? All right, I just want to talk to you about regionalism so that you're aware of certain things. There's that same flattened piece of land and that horrid hospital mint green background. Same it's shirt too. Hmm? It's the same shirt. Yep. Yeah. I thought the other guy's shirt was a little more dotted. Mm -mm. Well, oh, I guess you're right. right. Jason, Life. you're on it today. <laughs> Very good. Okay, let me just tell you something um, here. Some of the things you should look for in this style of painting, which is known as regionalism. Surprisingly enough, there's ornamental patterning. Pattern, I can't talk. Patterning. Mm -hmm. 
polka dot shirt. If you look at the ladies of the DAR, when picture these portraits and things are so stark, he does add a little bit of a um, decorative quality. He did seal all of his paintings with oil glazes, which also gives it that very smooth look. Aside from the fact that his brush stroke is very, very smooth, you don't see much texture in any of his paintings. Check out that cow's tail, very ornamental, you know? Okay, um, he did do his pattern surfaces in his farm lands that we have seen so far. Um, he also was a lithographer. I'm gonna show you some of those. And he, this is a very interesting thing that he did. He, it's known as a subtractive technique. He would wipe away paint that he had applied to create a painting. So while these look all very smooth and everything you've seen so far, maybe he just loaded up the paint and lifted out. It's, a, it's very interesting. Now again, this boy who's sitting and milking, he to me looks like a little toy sitting on a wooden bench. And the cow from the background is rather, I mean from the back, is rather humorous. People love these paintings. They love them, okay? So again, though, one of the things you have to also notice is he does do caricatures. There's your guy with the big ears again, Jason, the kid, right? Um, there, there is, there's a form of caricature going on. Big shoulders, big chest, baffled looks. Talk about sunburned cheeks. I mean, he does seem like he's having some fun with these people. Okay, let's move on to the next one, please. Oh, now this is quite, quite different. Um, this is called Death on the Ridge. No people. Yeah, there's a landscape, so to speak, but it's obviously very, very ominous. Let me point some things out to you. The telephone poles are all tilting and they look like crosses. Don't you think? Um, it's very interesting. The cars, I mean, this car is what shall I say, it's, it's fairly correct in its rendering. This guy is very stretched out and it looks very almost whimsical compared to this. And then the truck, it speaks for itself, it's massive. It's very haunting with his choice of colors, his sort of mossy greens, grays, and slight purples. And then of course, the culprit, the truck driver, um, truck itself is, is red. I do find this to have more, sadly, more action in it, his painting, than any of his other paintings. Do we like it or hate it? it, it it's frightening in a way because yes. the, the car, uh, the the, uh, the car in what towards the center is in two lanes across the road, and right. the truck is coming in t towards us as if uh, there's, there's going to be a, a terrible accident, as if the oh, truck yeah. is going to hit that car. So oh, yeah. when you, when in your introduction, you mentioned the word, I thought you said death because- Well, I think it, that's, that car look, could be a hearse. You know, yes, but why would it be there unless he's just interjecting it in with his crosses and such? That's a good point, Doris. Yeah, it's just, there's obviously about to be a horrendous accident. Yeah. So if you look at, the way traffic works, that car, the hearse, is in the wrong lane. It would be swerving mm -hmm. the other way. It should be on the right side, not going yep. that way. Tru I don't know. The storm, uh, omnibus, I don't know. Do you it's, think it would be swerving the other way is my question. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's also a large car, um, hearse, whatever. I think it's a very interesting painting of his. Um, I think it's fascinating the way he shows the fencing here and just the wires. I mean, it's brilliant composition. The way he has his lights and his darks, but it's very, very, very different than um, any of the, his other paintings. There's a lot of design going on in here and action, so to speak. 
So we can move on to the next one, please. Okay, this one is called um, Spilt Milk in 1935. Well, there goes my light. Um, again, you see the flat piece of land that he's standing on, right? Um, the cow, the bull, whatever it is, is elongated to great extreme. And there's that little boy that has very, very long, strong, and developed arms. Check out these little boy's toes. You know, everything, I love the stain that he created on the um, overalls with the little edges of milk. Okay, I mean, obviously something went wrong. The kid is astonished and probably rather upset. And um, I, I do not know what he is holding. If it's some kind of milking, I do not know. Or maybe it was where he was sitting. That could yeah. be, that's what it is. So anyway, the introduction of this kind of peachy background, what do you think? It's not green. <laughs> no. It almost looks like a piece of sculpture, don't you think? Like the next step would be sculpture. This would be like the artist quote sketch before, but I mean, it's so static. It is so static. Even the little boy's face, which to me is terrifying. I mean, his mouth is open. I don't know if those are tears on his cheek or not, but it's caught in a moment. Oh, how about the, the three pieces? Of the cow is so <laughs> distorted. It, it's obviously it's not the, the, the cow is huge. It reminds me of one of Picasso's distortions, you know, Picasso's <clears> and <throat> cows and things. It's I find this very eerie. I really did, do. Did he do the, the three pieces during his marriage? Um, this was done. Wait, let me check out the date. Um, hang on one second. Good question. Maybe um, she didn't want him working so much on his art. <laughs> it's like, it, it um, probably took no, him a lot longer to do the landscape stuff. Yeah, no, he was married at this time. Okay. So look at his corn colored hair. I mean, he's a Midwestern little boy who's not a boy. Look at those hands. Those are like a man's hands. So to speak. I mean, I'm really generalizing, but it's kind of true. All right, let's move on. Lisa, you, you've you shown us uh, several uh, uh, paintings where, where the figures were compressed. And so this is a boy's, maybe a boy's face, but the whole, that, that concept of uh, compression. Uh, so yeah. when I first looked at it, is it a man boy or, or a boy on the way to being a man with, with that compressed look, which is what we have here? Yep, yep. Though so he has a little boy's face with man's arms and the beginning of broad shoulders. It's, it's very interesting, I think. Okay, can we move on to the next one, please? That's all I got, Lisa. What? Yeah, that's nice. all. Where did Saturday night go? Oh dear, I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Okay, this is called Saturday night in 1936. Now just think, just what I mentioned with you. They're nude, they're stripping, is it erotic? I mean, I know farm hands or workers and, I mean, you know, you're stripping, you're, you're cleaning yourself up for Saturday night. It's a communal tub, okay? Um, again, he is painting nude men and not in a classic way. You know, they're stripping off their shirts and all of, they're well built, okay? They're not the classic nude statue, so to speak, or paintings, paintings of group Greek and Roman artists, okay? What is your take on this? This is a form of printing, by the way. You can't all be silent by this. Anyone? Well, here's uh, another nude male in his picture. Yeah. yeah. So again, I mean, people painted nudes all the time, but I don't know because he liked the color pink and he had a high voice. Well, I don't I, 
It's what? That, that, that's, with all due respect, that's a stereotype. But I mean, here <laughs> he is what, is what he's doing. I mean, mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with it, but it must have been right. a tortured life for him. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So again, um, he did murals for hotels in, uh, where was it again? Cedar Rapids. Now it's interesting, if we could just move on to the next one, please. Okay, we'll talk about this in a second. He did do a quick trip in 1928 to go to Munich, Germany, and he designed um, um, stained glass windows for a veterans hospital there. So that's like a, a quick little jaunt, but let's go back to this now. What, I mean, to me, this almost looks like digital art, you know, computer generated art. Yeah. I kind of like it. It's so unusual. Again, to me, it reminds me of a board game, but you can see the little people, the farmer and his horses there. You can see signs of life. I mean, there's a, um, the top of houses down into the valley and you see little meatball um, trees, but isn't it interesting how he did those fields? Don't you think? Yeah, I've yeah never... I think it's interesting also, he uses this almost, um, at least as it comes in my screen, uh, sort of, um, a, 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 it's, it's, it's not even a natural green for those fields. <laughs> Turf. His, his, it looks like his objective turf. was not to be realistic. No, it looks like astroturf, actually. That's a good question. Now look at this in the top far um, hill, all right? It would be, I think, on your right? Left. And you look at that square resting on that hill. I swear to God, it reminds me you know, of all those things that spe people speculate on crop circles and alien life. This, to me, is very alien looking. It has a setting though, because if you look at the top, there's there's a sky, so mm -hmm. so uh, it, it is framed by the sky, really. Thank God, because if you get rid of that sky, again, you can't you can barely identify what's going on. In many ways, it's a huge step into modern art. I mean, he's designing here. So while he made his you know static little. Uh, painting, well, not little, but paintings of, you know, farmhands and stuff like that. This is way ahead of his time. Did, did his paintings sell? Yeah, yeah, he did. He sold. And um, again, wait, one thing, I'm just looking for this here. Um, yes, they did. And he was pretty famous. And he was a long the school, when I say he was a regionalist, there was um, John Stuart Curie, and there's the famous, famous murals in the Kings Highway Elementary School. Um, oh. Yeah, that were all sort of linked together. And, you know, if you feel like going to the elementary school or Googling it or not, Curie did more of people, but it's that same kind of haunted, eerie look uh, uh lisa we have one of those in the building uh, oh do you also team. yes which where uh it's kind of midway down the hall the, across, the, from the media bay. across the media bay it's the kid with the gun oh for god's sakes i know it's crazy right you right? know what we're talking about no i mean i walked down and I never i'll send you a it. picture I'd love to see that. Now, I went to King's Highway Elementary School, and those frescoes that were done, you know, on the stage scared the life out of me. They were so, they're beautiful, but they're very, very eerie. Okay, moving right along, please. Another lift, excuse me, another lithograph, okay? This is called The Approaching Storm. It was done, ouch a year before he died in 1940, okay? Um, again, I think it's fascinating. Very mechanical, approaching storm and it's still static. Though 
he does have those slanting, thin, printed lines below the clouds. Can you all see that? Mm -hmm. Now, the workers are sort of, they're not in silhouette. There's a beam of light outlining. I mean, he's defined the guy in the foreground, but um, it's that quintessential classic pose of working people, whether they're harvesting, whether people are picking cotton, whether you're doing fruit, whatever. That is the classic stance and is very, very powerful. What do you think about his lithographs, everybody? I like them. I like them. Notice again, when I mentioned that he had a flair for ornamentation, look at the path where he is standing and off to the side too. It's a very detailed, decorated pathway. And I think it's fascinating. He's certainly an extremely well-trained artist. Yes, yes, he was. Yes. He, he, I'm impressed by the fact you see all shades of uh, from w white to gray. Yep, yep. Whole a panoply of coloration, even though it's only black and white. Right. I, I find his black and white pieces very powerful. And I think it's very interesting. You have this. This is a very kind of WPA pose, you know. Um, yeah. And um, he's capable of that kind of thing in murals and such. And then he did that green, particularly weird farm field just before. But I rather, I mean, it, it's like Americana. I rather like it. Okay. Let's move along, please. <clears throat> All right, here we go. This one kills me. This is called Spring in Town. Do we not think of Grandma Moses a little bit? Remember I did that Grandma Moses lecture? Well, he's such a fabulous craftsman. Excuse me? He's, he's so skillful. I mean- He really is. He really is. Um, it's so, I find, do you find all of you like a cheerful painting? What do you read from this? Anybody? It looks oh. like, go ahead. Okay, anyway, th th this, is, this is someone's backyard in the middle, mm -hmm. in the middle of town somewhere. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's like Jason has a backyard and he's planting things in limited space. So this man uh, is in touch with nature <laughs> in a very limited space. No, I mean, it's, it's great. We should all do that. Um, but I think the lighting on this is really, I call it anxiety lighting. This kind of lighting makes me anxious. Tell me if you think I'm crazy. There's some kind of storm coming up. Do you see the lighting of the trees and the church, how they're sort of, are they backlit? They're highlighted compared to the man and his family working? Well, there's a lot of wind there because look at the quilts on the I line. know, like if you, if you, it's very odd. You look at the quilts blowing, okay? His plants aren't blowing. Right. And, it's rather, to me, I find it very suffocating, but beautifully done. I think the plants are irises. It's kind of what the leaves look like. Yeah, they could be. And they could maybe be. garlic. I don't know. Yeah, maybe garlic on the, what he's digging part, out. Part right of now. a farm. Yeah. And maybe there's a hold of China that he's digging out. <laughs> yeah. That's it, Jason. <laughs> it's or very similar to one know. of those. I'm sorry? Or a hot tub, one or, one or the other. It's very similar to that pattern that he had on the field with, you know, the sort of digital looking painting. Okay. Everybody is extremely busy. This is town life, which is rather unusual for him to paint. Okay. And notice again, this farmer, he looks pretty hot, everybody, right? Not literally hot. I mean, he's got a good build, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Get your mind out of the gutter, Lisa. What's that, Jason? Get your mind out of the gutter. I'm sorry. Excuse me, everybody. But again, that theme of homosexuality going through, I'm just saying, okay? 
forgive me. But anyway, um, it's a very, very interesting painting. I feel it's almost got like surrealistic qualities to it. The lighting is, as I said, it's anxiety lighting for me. The lighting is so odd. Anybody have any thoughts? No? Is, is this one done on uh, the eve of World War II? This was done, hold on, um, spring. 40, did you say? Hold on, 1941. Uh, after the, the war. Gardens, possibly, you know? I just wondered whether the storms that you see in the four, I think the other one was 1940, was right. the coming of war. You might be very right there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the shape of things to come. When was this 1940? He died in what, 1941, I believe. He died yeah, when in did, right? When no, did no, he no, die? What? 42. When, when did he 40, die? 40, 42 he, he is when died he um, in, let me just find my notes again. Why did 41. I just pull up Alice Neal? Um, <laughs> um, he died, what was it, 1941? Yeah. 42. He only, he only lived 51 years? Was he born he 1890? He had a yeah. short life. And what did he die of? Do you, oh, I'll tell say? you in a second. Uh. Okay. Probably falling in that hole. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's so deep and dark. And yeah, I think it's very interesting. Okay, let's move on to our other one, this is the corn cob chandelier hanging up in Cedar Rapids <laughs> Hotel. Do you not love it? <laughs> I think it's so great. So again, <laughs> along with his lithographs and things, he did the chandelier. <laughs> and people take it fun. seriously. I mean, it's so wonderful and insane. Hence, again, showing an example of his exemplary talents. I wish I had that thing. I do. It's it's just so kitsch. It's wonderful. Lisa, I could probably make that for you. Could you? Probably. How? With what? I've got a chandelier in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> I do something similar for Halloween, except it's skulls. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, this is his um, other kind of work that he did, his metal work. Again, extremely, extremely meticulous, organized, patterned. There's no unevenness to this at all. They're like screen things. And it's amazing. I mean, his, I, I think of Art Nouveau almost, you know, that curling, gentle quality. So he did that in the late 30s. And we're going to move on to something else now, if we could. I mentioned metalsmithing. This is a silver picture that he did in like 1937 or something. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? You say it's silver. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He's a silversmith. Look at the initials carved in. And it's worn. You can see, you know, it's had some abuse, so to speak. But um, I think it's extraordinary what he was capable of doing in a very very unique style. And we most of us only know him for American Gothic. If, if we could just jump ahead, maybe we could see American Gothic again. Uh, was sure. that on the emails? <laughs> I, I don't know if I have that. Lisa. Okay, never mind, never mind. This I'll is go. the last picture I have. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Do, do you so, want to uh, go back to the American Gothic? No, no, Gothic? no, don't worry, don't worry. We had some trouble, leave it be, we'll talk now. Um, what time is it anyway? Oh, yeah, we're a little early. But anyway, I just, nobody has been speaking much. And I really need some thoughts about him until I give my opinion. Okay? So what do you all think? Uh, amazing uh, versatility. Uh, and you, you had the feeling of earthiness. I did anyway. Uh, and all of his things, really. Uh, 
uh, the the, uh, the, the uh, that, that last one you showed of, of the metalwork that was mm -hmm. different, but uh, uh, otherwise uh, it's like his hands are in the ground feeling the earth, <laughs> right, yeah. right 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 through all of these pictures, whether they were more uh, precise, uh, at, at, at almost photographic or or yes. expressionistic or whatever, uh, but but you know it was like you say he was from the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And that he, uh, his roots were were right with the people there, uh, especially the the uh, when in the early thirties, you know, mm -hmm. it was a very hard time, and the yeah. uh, and the and the, the hardness of life is shown in the especially in the early pictures. Uh, everything's very grim, uh, and, and so it was a, a reflection, perhaps, of the of the people that he that he well, yeah. worked with. Right. Now, I'm going to just tell you one other thing. Um, after he did his Veterans Memorial um, in Munich, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, yeah, there was also, he did off, also did one in Cedar Rapids. It was destroyed in a flood. They are currently restoring it now. He settled in Cedar Rapids yet again, and um, this is very interesting. He taught junior high school students but he also served in the army as a camouflage painter. That's pretty interesting, I think. Okay. That, that it goes right into the World War II, right, Herb, where they had- Right. You had to hide the tanks. You had that to fake it. tanks. Yep. The, the fake total and fake. separate sure war. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's fascinating. However, I just want to tell you when, I did mention when he died, and um, he died sadly of cirrhosis of the liver. Ah, he drank a lot. What's that? He drank a lot, sounds yes, like. I think he did. I think he yeah. did. So um, I don't know. It's an interesting contradiction, this lecture. I think he loved his land. He loved the Midwest. He never strayed. He never really, I mean, he had his trips to Europe to learn, but you know, so many of the artists that we have covered have gone and gone to Europe or, you know, settled somewhere else. They were escaping things. He stayed put, he stayed put and he loved that land. Does anybody else have any thoughts of what kind of painter he was? I think he was uh, a very, very Midwestern painter. Yeah. Yeah, regional, and I think that's that's uh, good. I mean, it's his, very his style. His style certainly is different, as you said, like Lego. But that was his style. Yeah, and evidently he was very successful. So, no, it's it's just incredible because you know, as I did research and stuff. I mean, there are artists who have. I mean, he was the first one with this style, highly unusual. Yeah, um, highly unusual. And he stuck to it. He never strayed, except when went into different meetings. Is there anybody, it's like Alice Neal, you know, if you, all through expressionism and abstract expression and all, she did her portraits. All through his short life, portraits and farm. Okay? So stick it's with what you know. I mean, that's what it comes. To. I'm sorry, Jason? Stick with what you know. Yes, there is something to be said about that. There is something. Now, any other opinions on his work? Do we like it? Is it, is, is it saleable today? Is it popular today? No. Not particularly, no. no. I mean, it hangs in museums. I do not believe that collectors are dying to no. invest in pieces. But remember, art is cyclical. And you never know who's going to pop up you know, and be mm -hmm. the darling of the art world. So he may have a, a rebirth, so to speak. I want to end up by saying that, and I rarely say this, I found him one of the most unnerving painters that I've ever covered. He totally, I found him haunting his farmland. He really, really unnerved me. Because of the green, please, my, my school <laughs> colors were that... Every wall in my school that was that green that you were haunted by. It's not so much. You wouldn't have made it out of my elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> you 
no, no, no. It's not even so much of the color. I think it's the, the bloated landscapes, which were so, so alien, the tortured people, which is tragic, and um, the staticness of his work. I just felt like I couldn't breathe through a lot of it. So that's why we saw Miss Piggy and Kermit. Yes. <laughs> well, maybe uh, it could be that that's his statement. Did he find did he find that Midwest suffocating? Maybe so. There were a lot of storms in his pictures. Yes. So. Well, yeah. very like a, the Wizard of Oz. I guess they're always yeah. Yeah, cyclones. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Um, again, I mean, I think the Midwest is beautiful and, you know, the vastness and all of that. But um, these paintings really threw me. Maybe it's just because I'm really neurotic. I don't know, but that I have to—I have to say them, and they really did a number on me. Hmm. Anybody else have any thoughts before we all say goodbye? Well, go have a drink now and be <laughs> over. You knew how to to paint a windmill. <laughs> well, that screen—you really nailed it there. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I really respect him, but um, I really respect him but not for me, which is okay. I mean, I don't have to love everybody who I lecture on. Just to tell you, we've got two lectures coming up sometime in October. I don't know the dates, but this is a big, big jump. And I think it's very interesting. We're going to do Aboriginal art, art from the outback in Australia, which is very fascinating. And we're also gonna do Carl Larson, a Swedish artist, painter, illustrator extremely charming. So we're traveling around the world, guys, okay? Did you say Carl or Carla? Or Carl with a K. Oh, okay. So- Thank you, this was terrific, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I'm glad you weren't as anxious as I was. <laughs> but anyway. Your insights, Lisa. You really got right to it, you got down to it. So we can really feel and almost touch the artist. Which one? Well, yeah. I mean, very, very helpful. I heard he's hot. Her. Hey. I heard he's hot. <laughs> no, that. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's just there is that thread, but nonetheless, it makes us think more of him than just American Gothic. That was my point. Because it a, you good. I'm glad to hear that. And. Um, yeah, so that's that. So I hope to see you all soon. Okay, enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you, Jason. Okay. You're welcome, Thank Take you. Take care, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, Lisa. Yeah. I swear I had all his pictures on there. I don't know. It seems short to me. So that's what you get when you let me do your PowerPoints. Just remember that. You're like, what do you mean you don't have any more pictures? <laughs> oh, that's right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. We're good. I, I, I hope we are. We're good. There's no more after that, really. Not never say good. never. Never say you, never. Well, it's true. Um, yeah. No, you did a great job as you always do, okay? You, it gave you me a worked on learning how to do this, right? You said you were going to do that. I haven't gotten there yet, Jason. Okay. I, I, am... I need you to grow, right, Herb? Just like Herb does. Herb, I need you to grow and clean the couch behind me. <laughs> okay. I'll have to get you, Cheryl to come in because that's so good. <laughs> if I touch it, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> if I move one.